When Andrea Renner made the difficult choice to have surgery and miss her senior season, she and the doctors were unsure if that decision was ever going to lead her back on the ice for the Huskies. Everything she loves, the championships, team camaraderie, and hockey would have to wait. Hockey means a lot to me. Um, it's been my whole life ever since I was a little kid. I started when I was, I believe, seven or eight, and I started because my older brother was playing, and I just fell in love with it, and I said, I want to do, do what he's doing. I love hockey, and it's been my whole life. I've dedicated my whole life to it, so it means so much to me. Coming here to Northeastern, it's been great, and it's been nothing but the best. My injury was not, was not a straight line of this is what happened, this is what's going to be the protocol, and we go from here. It was, it was a little bit different than that. It was a lot of ups and downs. Going into my senior year, I started to have a lot of low back pain, and it kind of turned into some really serious sciatica. I couldn't really feel my calf. I didn't have much feeling in the bottom of my foot or in, in my toe. I couldn't really activate my left leg too much, and I had a lot of low back pain and spent a lot of that summer just trying to figure out what was really wrong at that point. You know, eventually a doctor did see that I had a fracture in my spine, so from then on I kind of just knew that's what it was. In the back of my head I knew something else was wrong and I wasn't really sure what it was. I just remember at practice I was in pain every time I was striding and every time I was battling for a puck. I just, I didn't have the strength, I didn't have the speed because I was in so much pain every single time I stepped on the ice. So I had to have that conversation within myself, with my family and ultimately with the coaches that I think Redshirting was going to have to be probably the best option for me at that point to really figure out what was going on. I went home for a few days to go see a doctor. He saw a good amount of damage in my hip that he basically said, I can operate on your hip, but I'm not a back doctor. I can't, I can't guarantee that your back pain is going to go away. All I can do is look at the image on your hip. I can see there's a, a lot wrong there and I can fix it and we can see what happens after. At that point, I knew just with my past injuries with my back, it didn't feel the same as when I broke it in high school. And I knew something else was wrong, and I kind of took that, almost like that risk that I think it's my hip, and I think I need to have surgery on my hips. Andrea, she's one of the most competitive hockey players that, that you'll ever see. She's got one of the heaviest shots in the country. You know, Andrea is someone that breathes, sleeps, and eats hockey, and we're very fortunate to have her as a part of our program. It's honestly crazy what she's been through and what she's been able to build to be able to come back and play hockey. It's just unbelievable. You know, we were all heartbroken for her. We know that she loves the game and she didn't really care, honestly, about herself. She was more upset about letting the team down, which I think says a lot about Renner. I didn't know what I was getting into when I woke up from surgery, that's for sure. I knew I had a long journey ahead of me into rehabbing and getting back, but when you have something that physically hurts you, that, that mental and that emotional aspect is so important to keep in check and keep it balanced. And I struggled with that for a little while early on before my surgery. The toughest thing for me at that point was knowing how to walk again. I just remember how much I struggled emotionally, just being so frustrated when I wasn't able to do a lot of things on my own because I'm a pretty individual person. I like to think that I am, so having someone's help was always really really tough. I think the big mental piece getting getting me back was, was Katie Brooks. During my whole injury last year, I reached out to her a ton and we met almost pretty much weekly. She's such a great person and such a great role model for many people, including myself. My role as performance health coach is really to help optimize the health, the well-being, and the performance of student athletes. Andrea and I met about two years ago. A lot of what we shared and what we, we spoke about surrounded for sure the injury but the emotional pain and she wasn't sure who to turn to and who to talk to. She had lots of support from her teammates and coaches but it's a difficult thing to share our emotions to be vulnerable and so we tried to tap into that pain a little bit more, the emotional pain, the physical pain that she was going through and the, the what ifs of the future and the uncertainty of will I recover, how long will it be. I don't know that there was a distinct moment of, you know, where I detected some sort of shift or, or breakthrough in her. I think she committed to having an openness all along, right? And just the fact of showing up and being willing to open up about difficulties that she was experiencing. 
every time that she was willing to do that was a shift and was growth and evolution. Her openness and willingness to want to get better and a willingness to lean into that discomfort, which is just so critical to our growth and evolution as, as humans and certainly as athletes. Life is gonna throw you a lot of adversity, but being grateful for the things that you do have and the people that are, you're surrounded with is what's gonna keep you going and what's gonna make you push through those tough times. Here's the redshirt senior in on the breakaway. Renner Deek shoots, scores! I was thrilled for Andrea when she took that first step on the ice and I knew how difficult it was for her to make the decision that she did to take care of herself so she can come back and be the best player that she possibly can be. And I was just so proud of her that she finally got to the light at the end of the tunnel. I just remember putting on my jersey and I got goosebumps when I was putting it back on for that first time. It, it felt like so long that I was waiting for that moment. I was just so proud of our team and the amount of adversity that we were facing even before that. And then being over a full calendar year off of not playing um, in a Northeastern jersey was so special to do that again. And it's something that I'll just remember for such a long time. Having her back this year is just, it's great. Like seeing her on the ice, it's, it's like she never missed a beat, which is just crazy for not playing in over a year. Has the opportunity back in his shot, score! Scoring that first goal against Boston College, our rival is so surreal. I couldn't even believe what had happened. Um, I just remember after scoring, I kind of put my hands up, put my head back, and just kind of felt this huge weight released off my back. That's honestly what it felt like. It was poetic, you know, it, I think it was validation for her that all the effort that she put in to get back to where she needed to be was worth it.